Okay, I will call the October meeting of the Community Television of Santa Cruz to order. It's 5.01. Um, will the secretary call the roll? Yes. Chair Lanyet. I'm here. Director Maziars. Present. Director Hall. Here. Director Mannheim. Here. Director O'Driscoll. Here. Director Shaw. Director Gudger. Here. Director Granados. Director Warren. Here. Oh, oh okay. There she is. Okay. I'll uh, note for the record that Director Granados has joined us. Hi, Christina. Um, move on to oral communications. Any person may address the board during its oral communications period. All oral communications must be directed to an item not listed on today's consent or regular agenda and must be within the jurisdiction of the board. Any? Seeing none, um, I'll, we have consideration of late additions to the agenda, additions and deletions to the consent and regular agenda. I'll just note, note that there's been a, a request for by, by Keith for some information. It'll just come under announcements. We don't really need to put it on the agenda, but we'll have it under announcements. We'll move on to the consent agenda and I'll, I'll note that item number four, we've added, this is kind of a procedural item, just under Robert's rules of order, really we should approve the meeting agenda as, as we move forward. Um, we could take um, dissent, I suppose, if there is some. So that's an item there. And then we have approved board meetings of September 27, 2021, and approve the finance committee just hot off the presses finance committee recommendation to accept September 2021 financial reports. Uh, well, I'll, motion? I'll, move, I'll move the uh, consent agenda and I'll say just two words on the finance committee report to give everybody a little background. I'll so, second. Yeah. Okay. We have a motion by Director Hall and a second by Director Gudger. Director Hall. Just uh, so far, our finances are doing well. The office space rentals are a little behind, but other income is going up. So, so far this year, we're we're coming along pretty well. So that was basically the sum total of a half hour discussion at the finance committee meeting today. So I just wanted to give you a brief update and uh, that. And we have two fine other members plus our chair and they look at these reports in great detail and we have a great accountant. So uh, it's nice to be in a position to know we're, we're being responsible and at this point we're being fiscally uh, sound. Thank you. Uh, Director Meziaris. I just had a quick question and, and I probably could have asked Google, but um, um, you know, I, I used to look at, when I first joined the board, I used to look at the financial reports a lot more closely. And then I joined the finance committee and saw how closely the finance committee people were looking at the uh, financials. So then I realized I don't need to look at them so closely now that I'm not on the finance committee. But I was just looking over them today and there was a mention of a CDAR. I'm curious what a CDAR is. Um, Becca can explain it, but I could too, but she's the one that does the CDARs. <laughs> Joe, Joe is better at it than me. He led me down the garden path to CDARs, he and Keith. Um, the, uh, the insurance that you can get when you put money in the bank is only, uh, only your money is only insured up to $250,000. So we have more than that. So what we do is we put them, that money in, in a vehicle or an instrument, I guess they call it, called a CDAR. And that, and that is, it's a CD that's registered at a different bank. So the, the money doesn't have to, um, we don't have to have a bunch of bank accounts at different banks so that we have $250,000 in each bank. We um, just have it in CDARs. That way we can control them at our current bank. And, um, and we do, we, we watch the interest and try to get some. And uh, so they, they mature pretty quickly because I'm always afraid to have them locked into some low amount and suddenly things get better. So we uh, we have a couple of them. That's where our savings is basically. And then so they're then FDIC uh, insured each right. of those because they don't exceed two hundred. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you so much. CDR, I, I learned CDRs something today. Of Lebanon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, great. Um, 
So did we have, I guess we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. I guess we have a vote. Do we, do we need to call the roll or can we just do a voice? I think for consent, we, you can do voice. Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Approved unanimously. So ordered. Um, okay, let's move to the regular agenda. And we'll start out with the executive director's report, a copy of which um, is in your packet. Becca. Yeah. So I'm going to um, give you my report. And I have added some things since I wrote it, because uh, more things came to mind that I thought you might like to know about. So there's some additions here. And also, there was a blank. I was waiting for information that didn't come. <laughs> and I fired off my report with a question mark in it. So I'll get to that. Um, under administration and staff, we are hiring a new video technician. So if you know of anybody, uh, let them know. We are looking for a new, a new person. We had a staff member depart, and so we're filling that spot. Um, we are now, it's great, we're able to do all of our government meetings, including the Board of Supervisors, with one operator. For a while, we were using two because the Zoom part was so tricky. And uh, once we start doing hybrid meetings, which are sort of a Zoom meeting within uh, a live meeting, now it's like a Venn diagram of meetings. And uh, that was really tricky, but we've got it ironed out now. And the county is doing a lot of their own Zoom activity. We still do the, we still set the meetings up for them and uh, use our account uh, for the recordings, but they um, man them themselves. So uh, they're, they've gotten really good at it. So we don't have to have an operator back them up. So that's great for us. Uh, uh, that is a big move forward. And um, under uh, revenue, um, we just ended the first quarter of our fiscal year. And I'm happy to say that we earned 26% of our annual budget. So 1% over <laughs> and um, also uh, we only um, spent 22% of our annual budget for expenses. So a little bit under there. So <laughs> we're all even out in the end, but um, uh, it's good first quarter. I want to let you know that because uh, Joe mentioned that we're not doing um, as well as we'd like in the co-working center, but we're making up for it with our captioning service and our, our meeting service and our other uh, um, like not production, but documentation service. So we're 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 doing fine at this point. Our um, the co-working center in the fiscal year 2020-2021 um, did pretty well. It actually earned 112% of its projected budget. So that that is good, and um, hopefully that'll be the outcome <laughs> of this year. And uh, next uh, month, we'll have full numbers for the whole organization for the fiscal year. We just don't have the year-end numbers put together quite yet. Right now in the co-working center, the break-even number is $10,000 a month. It's back up now. And in September, we earned 91, so a little bit under. But um, like I said, we're making it up in other categories. Um, under paid services, we did 18 government meetings. That's the surprise magic number that you didn't get. And um, the we did do a uh, paid production. Uh, it was uh, someone who wanted to, who did an event on their own about fire safety and got the fire department to come and talk. And apparently it was a great event. I've heard from friends who went to it. That was a great event. And uh, Victor and his team, um, had it live streaming, and then uh, later we put it on television. So, so it was a good event, and it was good information to give to the community. And it was one of um, we're able to do live streaming from outside the building now. So that's a that's a really good thing that um, Victor and his team have done a really good job putting that together and making it work. And um, Things in progress that we have going on are, uh, we have a fiscal sponsorship that I've mentioned before. We're getting closer on doing that. We've got all the documents ready and we're about to sign off. So that'll be a good first project for us. It's not huge and um, it's easy, it's within easy control for Mel. And you know this is a good beta test for us on this, make sure we have all our ducks in a row. Uh, under facilities and equipment, 
Um, we are working on the installation for the new telecast equipment. Most of it we have now, and we are doing weekly meetings uh, and we we expect to be done by the end of the year. And it's not just a lot of exciting stuff happening now. We're just planning. One of the things they're working on is the trends, the migration they call it, of all of the content we have now from one um, one platform from the Telview platform, which is Connect in the cloud, to to the new thing that we'll be using. And um, that's being coordinated now. Victor's doing most of the work, but we have other uh, another engineer backing him up. And um, they, I spoke to them about that this morning, and they, they, they see no problems. So um, in July, we started inspecting all of our equipment that we rent and that members use. And we've been repairing and replacing things. And now, by now, by this time, it's by September, we got through all of the camera kits and all of the tripods. And we're now working on microphones. Um, <laughs> And we had 30 tripods, so it's not, it sounds like we haven't done much, but there's, we have a lot of equipment. Um, under uh, building security, we've had another break in of our storage container. Um, the burglar took a bunch of cables, probably thinking that there was copper in them. Sometimes that happens. And uh, the security company did not see it. Um, and uh, although they recorded it, but the way the cameras work, they only see a flash if somebody's moving and to them, it didn't look like anything serious. So um, we've spoken with them and we're working on a new plan to make it, uh, to make our area more secure. We're gonna be moving around some cameras that are pointing at things that are not that important. And um, uh, that's kind of an ongoing process. We're also entertaining possibly a gate at the front or a fence around the place that would allow people to come in with their fob that lets them in the door, would open the gate, they could come through at night. During the day, the gate would be open, of course. And then, um, and there are some possible other ideas of maybe having a patrol for a short time at night just to get the word out that there's somebody there. Um, there is another system where we could actually speak to people, <laughs> but um, the company is hesitant to do that because there are apartments around us and uh, it's apparently is really loud. So um, we are going to continue to pursue ideas and I think we're going to talk to, um, I'd like to talk to a consultant and just get a really good look at our building, the vulnerabilities, you know, how and, and what exactly is feasible, what can we really do? Because a fence, you know, some people think that people will just hop over a fence. And my thought is it's a deterrent. People, people now I think are just free to walk into our building and look around and see what there is. And if they, then they find something and try to take it or try to harm it. And if they couldn't walk in, then they wouldn't know if it'd be worth hopping over that fence. Correct, so Gloria, I, I see Larry's hands up. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, but it was was the break in us inside the building or outside the building? Outside, we have a big okay. Okay, I just wanted. To, I, I heard you say coming into the building, and I was a little confused. So, it, have we is, have all the break ins been outside in the storage container? It's yeah, the break ins have been in the storage container. We did have a trailer that was parked back there. That was one of our employees had a grip truck that was parked back there, and that was broken into. But nothing and, inside. Everything's been outside. Physically yeah, they've never before. been able to get in, but they have caused okay. plenty of damage outside. Not only that, but they've broken into our fiber connection. They've broken into our electrical box. They took the battery out of our generator. They turned off the water to the building. Then they turned on water and just let it run all night. So there's lots of mischief uh, in addition to theft. Thank you. But, um, and um, so we're, I'm gonna continue to work on that and, and I'll keep you apprised as we go forward. And you'll probably have to vote on some of the things. <laughs> so um, there, uh, nothing's happening yet. Um, you'll certainly be involved. Um, we had more uh, loss this month as um, we had a local nonprofit rented some equipment for an event and the event turned out to be in not a very safe place. And um, I guess traditionally it was, but things changed as the homeless camps moved around and um, all the equipment she rented was taken. And so, um, 
uh, that that organization. I've been working with them, and they will pay for the equipment. And then uh, we also one of our youth grants. Um, someone stole 12 of the 25 iPads that um, we lent them, and uh, they will pay for those as well. So um, uh, we'll we haven't lost anything, but it's just kind of sad that those things happened. And uh, all that equipment has been replaced. We went ahead and replaced it, and um, we'll be paid back for it soon. Director um, Laurent has a question again. Yeah, sorry. This this happens to hit a little close to home here too. Um, so, do we do you have anything on the iPads to um, any software to disable their use, or because these are grant ones, we don't do things. We don't like do well, asset. I investigated right. that with Apple with having something like that on them. They have find my iPad on them, but um, the real heavy duty, like wipe them clean from a distance stuff is just way expensive and very intricate and takes almost another person to run it. And I, when I, yeah, yeah I very much so. Them, I just didn't know. I mean, I think if they're, if they, well, like we have them for internal things, but I think with the grant stuff, it could be a little difficult. It uh, is. It is. The one thing that we have that we did was the iTunes, the, the iPads don't have anything on them. There's no no cool stuff except for uh, they have iMovie on them, which is a free app. But um, to get anything else on, you need to have the Apple ID, and there and they have an Apple ID, and I just changed it. So Apple knows they're owned by somebody else. So, but you know, they're probably they will they were probably hacked. I could tell that they never came on because my iPad will tell me someone just turned on your iPad in Gilroy or whatever. And so I know. So I think they quickly were spirited out of the county and somebody probably hacked them and cleaned them off. But um, yeah, we don't have a lot of recourse there to track them down, sadly. We have uh, find my iPad, but that's it. Um, so the last thing on, uh, oh, I've got a couple of things. There's the last thing on the, uh, the uh, report that you have from me is uh, outreach. And we did a kind of a synopsis report to the county about our youth grant program because um, we've added a couple of parts to it. And um, there are some new uh, board of supervisors members, some new supervisors that didn't know about the program. So we put together a document to tell them what we're doing and how, how it evolved. And then we also, I met with Digital Nest a couple of times because they're interested in a new grant, but our studio grant as it was doesn't seem to be relevant now. So I'm talking to them about what kinds of things they do with the equipment and what kinds of productions they're trying to do and maybe um, changing uh, the things, the pieces in that grant. I'm going to talk to some other, I'm going to talk to Joel Domhoff and uh, also Watsonville High School. There's a new teacher there and see how they're using it and what they could use because I think it's five years, you know, stuff changes and we should just be reviewing that and make sure that the grant is really helping kids get jobs in the future. We don't want them to work with equipment that doesn't make sense. And the final thing I wanted to um, add in the area of, of grants is that um, we had the animation grant is going and um, it is uh, at the library and I don't have information, much information about it right now because uh, this is a September report. So everything that happens in October, will you'll hear about next month. But one thing that was interesting came up that um, Keith got a note from, some, from a senior who said that she was sad that the um, program was only for kids and could we do one for seniors? Mm -hmm. So that's, um, something we um, we might want to consider. Um, the diff, the thing that we would need to do if that was something that we wanted to do would be talk to the county because the money that we do um, have that, we have money to do that grant, but it's earmarked for students. Now, if the, if the gear is already at the library and the students have already used it for that week, I don't know why we couldn't let seniors use it, but I think we need to, um, we probably need to, talk to the county and see what they think. And Keith has some thoughts about that as well. And that's the end of my report. All right, thank yeah. you. Um, I, any I questions, just discussion? 
Gee. Yeah, I would like to get the board's feeling about this. We have a specifically have a youth grant program, equipment aimed at nonprofits serving youth. The grant came in to serve youth at the library. And now there's a request that we serve adults at the library with the same equipment. The equipment will be used starting this month to December, probably January or February at a different branch, and then back at this branch, maybe in March or April. So the, the question I just would like to know a feel from the board is if it ends up being okay with our county overseers, how does this board feel about our youth grant being sandwiched in training adults too? So that's my question. Any so, comment? Yeah. Um, my feelings are that, you know, as long as the use is not going to uh, take away from the use of the youth, right? If, if the equipment is available and uh, it's being used as much as uh, the organization can use it for the youth. Why not use it also for um, adults and especially, you know, seniors? That would be my feeling too. Christina, I recognize your hand. Yeah, I was well said. I was going to basically say the same thing. And also, I think it would be interesting to at least, uh, if, if that's the case, to at least try just to get a feel for what the demand might be. There might be other opportunities to expand the grant to provide those services more fully. Yeah. So. Director Hall. I disagree with the uh, last two speakers. I think they've said it well. You, you do agree? You said, yes. Okay. It sounded like you said you disagree. Yes, I thought oh, okay. too. That I just <laughs> I, I just agree, yeah. Okay. Just yeah. agree. Yeah. So, Director Laurent. Yeah, so one thing, I mean, I think, it, I think it's great to see what, you know, for the youth and the young at heart, for sure. And, uh, but I do think it'd be interesting to see what kind of um, demand there is, because you could do something at community television, if, if that's the, you know, moving forward, if that's the direction and that, you know, that, that might be kind of an entry point for some other people to kind of get more involved in the organization yeah. as well. Becca. The, 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 the the issue would that be, and we might be able to overcome the issue, but the library provides a teacher that they pay. Yeah. And we don't have that ability. I mean, unless we can get our, we have people on the board who could do that work, <laughs> but, uh, but they do a lot of other work. So I don't know if we could get board members to volunteer, but one thing we don't have is money to pay teachers. Director Mannheim. Um, I think it'd be worth talking to our county um folks and see if they would if given we have we've had the youth grant program now for i'm going to guess it's been four or five years five years and and the first two years we had applicants but there are only a limited number of organizations that can take on that role of both you know managing the equipment and providing the training that we we could talk with them and see if they would how they would feel about changing that grant to be both a a because it's it's always been um, youth organizations or educational organizations and maybe add libraries into that as another um, sort of organizational institutions within the county that have the capability of both managing equipment and providing some training. And so that they become the library or um, systems become uh, a, a part of the program because there's a lot of money building up in that program right now. Right. So you're saying we put them in the libraries and let and anyone could use them, not just youth, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, it, there may be leave it up to the libraries to prioritize times for use for kids for for youth versus for adults. But from our perspective, leave, you know, have it be that a library system can be another organization that we add into the program. Or the library Director system. Hall and then Director O'Driscoll. I just wanted to give a plug to the library instructors because they've been doing Zoom classes all throughout the pandemic. And my <laughs> wife and I have been on a lot of them. And I've learned a lot. And there's maybe 20 people or so on each of the calls. I don't think I've seen one in a while 
but uh, they do have the ability and their instructions are very good and they're very patient with people who are learning. Janice? Um, I was just going to back up what everyone is saying. The, the library has been doing this for a number of months. And um, the people that are doing the training right now are skilled. And actually, public libraries think that they are educational institutions. <laughs> right. Um, it, would be, it would be good to name them precisely. But yes. Yeah, great. Keith. I'd, I'd like to point out a small point here that the actual grant organization in this case is the Friends of the Santa Cruz Public Library. Mm -hmm. And that this is being offered as what's called community sponsored programming to the library. And there's a little bit of confusion right now as to how the community is going to sponsor programming. So this is sort of a, a test to see how the library likes us bringing in this kind of training. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to go well. I mean, I'm working hard to make sure that everybody involved knows what's going on. Um, but if that's that's where the money to, to pay an instructor would come from. Right. I want to point out that our, one of our directors who's not here, Elizabeth, has volunteered to teach this first class and is not being compensated. Yeah. So I don't think it's, well, I mean, I have to ask her, but I don't feel it's fair to her in the long run to just keep piling more onto her. Uh, she's a very busy person. So um, I've already spoken with the president of the Capitola chapter of the Friends of the Library, and they're also interested in possibly doing an adult class. So if we need an instructor for adults, I think we can get that covered that way. And then, as I mentioned before, I think it's going to La Selva in the beginning of the year. And mm -hmm. if we need to pay an instructor, they're also willing to pay an instructor. Mm -hmm. So this is a learning experience. I hope it goes well. It starts Saturday and I'm nervous. Uh -huh. but, um, <laughs> um, I, there's a lot of things that are new here and we're gonna hope that they all work because if they do, then the library will be happy and we'll have more of these programs. The friends will be happy mm -hmm. and hopefully community TV will be happy. Um, just as another note, if you go to the class sign up on the library website, the first thing it says, this program is made possible by a grant from Community Television and the Friends of the Santa Cruz Public Library. Great. Yay. Good. Very nice. Good branding. Thank you. Becca. Yeah, there's one thing that we, if we work with the libraries, and I think that's a great idea because they can, they can check out equipment and they can, uh, they can train. Um, we, in, whenever we grant equipment to any place, they have to give us back content. So yeah. it would have to be a program where the library was teaching and kids made things or adults made things and then we put them on television. So there were, and they don't have to be fabulous things or even very long, but, but they need to be like, you know, a minute or something. Each, each student would turn out a minute of video that we would upload as a part of our program. But the only way we can do the granting of equipment is by getting programming in exchange. Okay, that's fair. That's great. Yeah, I think that's a fair, fair trade. Um, any other comments on this subject? Good discussion. All right, thank you. Um, Becca, and we'll move on to the Education Committee report. Um, I will recognize David Warren, I think, or Keith. Well, uh, a lot happened uh, during our meeting, uh, Keith and I. <laughs> but, uh, essentially, uh, the, the, the more important thing, I think, is, is that I spoke with uh, Jason Borgen of at the COE, he's the Chief Technology and Innovation Officer. And um, he was he's very interested in partnering with Community TV. And uh, uh, Elizabeth has uh, made an appointment for us to speak on Friday and uh, get together. And uh, it's... Um, I think it's all very a positive thing. And he might like to apply for one of the Padcaster uh, uh, pieces so that he can learn, they, they can get people to, uh, to train others. 
on how to use it. Um, I did some background uh, research on community colleges across the country. And uh, basically, uh, with a few exceptions, most of those community colleges that were involved uh, with uh, open access TV um, also combined that with their digital media programs for film and video broadcasting. Um, some colleges were offering it through journalism and uh, we thought that that's our avenue with uh, Cabrillo primarily. Uh, getting a whole new program started is an enormous undertaking and takes a long time. But if we have access through journalism, I think that's a positive thing and we're going to pursue that. Uh, I did talk with the, um, the head of the journalism department and he is interested. So uh, we'll have to see what works in that regard. Um, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Uh, we're looking forward to this meeting. Um, I will also, um, Nick Abara is their PR officer. He's uh, for marketing at COE and he's interested in streaming from uh, CTV what would be essentially town halls and student vaccine initiatives. So if that's agreeable to everybody else, why we will pursue that as well. Yeah, that sounds good. And that's, that's basically it. Any questions or comments, um, Tom? I have a comment. I, it's just really heartening to sort of hear a focus on reaching out to the educational community and doing more in terms of connecting CTV and our mission with the educational community. Um, I've been on the board for a long time and we've always been aware that it was an area that we could do more in, but it's, and it's now it's, we're starting to see a focus on it. And it's, it's, I really appreciate it. All right, thank you. Um, moving on to the board chair's comments, I will um, note that Director Mannheim has been on the board for a long time and sadly is going to be leaving us in a couple of months due to term limits. Um, so I also would like to recognize that when, you, when we approved the minutes uh, by the consent agenda, those were authored by Director Mannheim. And I don't think there's any connection with the fact that he did that and that he's terming out. It just happens to happen at the same time. So I don't but buy on it. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, um, we uh, do have um, an interested party in um, returning to the board after a year away. And we're also have an open spot. Um, so our next uh, meeting will be confirming some new board members, re-upping basically some board members and um, we bringing on a, no a new board member. And I think there is an open spot in that large position. If anyone knows of somebody who might be a good fit and be interested, um, let, I guess me and Becca know, and we can pursue that. That's the, the gist of my report. Um, any staff requests or board member requests for specific items to appear on the next meeting agenda? So we will be talking about board people next time. Um, announcements, uh, Keith, I believe you have an announcement. Yes, um, Becca uh, handled one of the announcements I had about the fact that adults were interested in the program, which was great. Uh, a couple other things I want to mention is that we did a nonprofit spotlight on the Friends of the Santa Cruz Public Library, and our director, Janice, was the star of the show. Yay. And I'm able to report that uh, the board of the Friends is very happy with the results. In fact, a board member asked me to come back and excerpt the two minute section they could use for their capital campaign that's ongoing right now. Excellent. So I was happy to do that. Uh, we, we're hoping to get another organization for another nonprofit spotlight this week. And we are trying to schedule with Ferris Sabah an elected spotlight. 
that's we're going to kind of morph. It's, Becca's going to run it as elective spotlight, but hopefully it'll sort of prime the pump for um, doing some other education related uh, shows, maybe education spotlight, maybe something else. But um, we hope to get that done. We were supposed to do that Wednesday, but he had to cancel. So sometime next week. Um, and that's that's the announcements I have. Thanks. Great. Thank you much. Uh, Director Maziars. Yes. Um Maybe I should have asked during Becca's report, but uh, so I'm just curious about the status of the studio in terms of uh, members, volunteers. Uh, you didn't have a report of the volunteer advisory committee. And, and I know, I think last time you mentioned that there was not a whole lot of interest or some interest in some producers of in getting back into the studio. What's the current status on that, if I may ask at this time? Are you asking, asking Becca or Keith? Or Keith? <laughs> uh, well, Keith, are you, aren't you the volunteer advisory committee uh, chair? Uh, or I mean, if either wants to answer, I'm just kind of curious. Well, it sounded, I mean, I, from what I understand is the state no longer has tiers listed. Is that true? But the CDC does. And I, I believe we're still in the orange tier for CDC. So we're going to use that as our requirement. We got to be in yellow before the studios open. And yes, uh, Richard and Phil both want to come back, um, but hopefully uh, they'll understand that we're not ready to do that just yet. Well, I, I thank you for keeping the lights on. You and Becca with the uh, the in-house programming, the elected spotlight, and um, glad those have continued to go to to go on during this crucial time. Yeah, indeed. All right, well, thanks everybody. Um, any other final comments, observations? Um, anything, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move. All right, Director Mannheim. I'll second that. Okay. I think I got uh, Matre on second there. All right, all in favor. Bye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Thank Good you. Good discussion. Bye. 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 See you next month.